So you're planning on visiting Europe. Well, as a European, I wanted to give you some advice on how best to book your trip, how to save money, what to see, and I'll also be showing you what I believe to be some of my hidden gems of Europe. So to give you the best advice that I can about visiting the amazing continent of Europe, I'm going to break this video down section by section so you can get all the information that you need as clearly as possible. And what I'm first starting with is probably one of the most important one is how to get around Europe. Because whenever you're planning a trip, it can be pretty overwhelming of how you even going to get from what point A to B. And I'm assuming quite a lot of the people that are watching this video are, are from Europe. Obviously, a lot of Europeans would be very comfortable with the idea of getting around. But for some people, this will be an entirely new experience. So I'm going to break down some of the key ways or the best ways to travel around Europe. Now, if you're coming from the US, the way in which you travel in Europe versus United States is very different. From experience talking to a lot of people from that part of the world, it's very, very uncommon to get public transport apart from certain cities. But in Europe, in most most cases using public transport is actually one of the best ways to get around eat within the city and actually going to and from a different country. And the first part of public transport that we're going to discuss is trains. Getting a train is actually one of the greenest ways you can get around Europe and sometimes the actually easiest and quickest way to get around from country to country. So I know it can be really, really daunting buying train tickets when you're not familiar with the country, but with Europe, um, there's actually a lot, a lot of great tools that you can use to help you to book a train. If you're looking at regional trains, so as in they're not going cross borders, they're staying within the same country, a great app that you can download and use would be the train line app. Now this app is completely free and as you can see it actually gives you the breakdown of all the different times and different trains you can get and also a rough idea of how much uh, the tickets will be. Now as you can see a lot of these prices here um, are actually for this week in which I'm filming this video right now. Um, so these are probably the most expensive they can be because if you buy the tickets at late notice um, you'll actually find that they can be a lot more money and um, so it's always best if you know if you know what you're going to do to try and book your tickets in advance. I think normally um, tickets for regional trains come live about 90 days um, before the actual journey so it's about three months. An important part of when you're trying to book a train in Europe is to the difference between a direct train um, and one that in where you have to do multiple changes. Now the train that would have to do multiple changes will obviously take longer but generally is cheaper um, and ones that are direct will save you more time but then they'll be more expensive. Um, this again is quite clear on the train lineup which I'm showing you right now um, so you'll be able to find a way of doing it so that is number one you can do. Now obviously if there's last minute changes you can of course just buy tickets on the day um, at the station itself. Obviously don't expect the ticket person behind the desk to speak English so to cover yourself for this it's always good just to write down the name of the place that you want to go in that particular language um, and just show it to them say so that's where you want to go and generally that's a good way of getting around it. Um, now if you're going from border to border generally speaking you'll still be able to look up train times that you can do on the train line app but this is where you need to go directly to the company. I've actually provided a really helpful web page where someone breaks down exactly all the ins and outs of getting around Europe on a train because it is very, very detailed. Um, and I've just linked it down in the description of the video. Um, quite a lot of people seem to miss these kind of things when I'm talking in the videos, but they're really important and there to help you. So please look at that if you need more information. And now another alternative, apart from just buying things on the, on the train line, if you you've decided that actually rail is the best way to get around Europe and you wanted to go to multiple places, then there is a great website, which I'm sure you've all heard of, called Interrail. Now, Interrailing has become a very, very popular thing to do within Europe, um, which is essentially where you buy a ticket, which is you can make as unlimited journeys as you want within a precise period of time uh, to certain destinations. So as you can see here on the Interrail site, there's a number of different packages. As you can see, the prices do vary depending on what you're going to do. But if you are planning on going from place to place using Rail, then this might actually be the best and cheapest option for you to do. So please look into that more. So this is another option for you to use um, if you want to get around Europe in a train. And also this website contains so much information about rail times and maps and everything. So, so please check this out if you want to know more information 
on this or alternatively just ask me down in the comments. However, there are times where public transport won't really get where you need to be. Now it's a great idea to hire a car and drive around Europe. Um, but if this is going to be your plan, I would really implore you to look into each different countries rules although a lot of Europe is within the EU so the rules are generally the same the culture on the roads will be very very different so the way in which you drive in France and Italy will be extremely different in Austria and Switzerland or Germany even though they're right next to each other the culture is very very different so what i would employ you to do is if you're gonna do this look into the different driving styles should i say of these different countries so you're prepared and also you so you can buy the best car because if you're driving somewhere like italy actually having a smaller car is better than getting a bigger car um, obviously the culture in america is to get um significantly bigger cars than you would do in Europe, um, but there's a reason why cars are smaller in Europe, especially if you're driving in somewhere like Italy or any kind of plan to go to any medieval towns, make sure you try and get a smaller car. You'll thank me for that later. Um, but it, I've got a detailed video on how best to hire a car and how to save money. I'm just linking it above me right now. So if you want more information on that, please go to there after this video where I can break down more details of how you can save money if you plan to hire a car. Now, the other way of getting around, which is really, really obvious, is flying. Now, that obviously, that is something in America that is super common, but flying regionally within the United States is actually ridiculously expensive. But in Europe, it is the total opposite. It's really not that uncommon to get flights from London to Milan for £10. This is a single ticket, but still, it's absolutely insane. Um, I've again got a video on this explaining how you can get um, a cheap flight and using all of some of the tips that I use. Um, and I'm just linking it again above you right now where I go into a lot more detail. Uh, but this is another thing to keep in mind when you're booking a trip. Because what I've realized when talking to quite a lot of people from other parts of the world and even from uh, sort of North Canada or America is they're really shocked at how cheap flights are, but they just assume that they wouldn't be cheap because they assumed it'd be similar to yes but it's not the case at all obviously the best way of getting around europe in my opinion is a hybrid of the two um, i've done this when i've gone around various different countries of europe i've sort of flown from london to salzburg and then i got some trains around europe and then i flew to somewhere else because i was going quite far and that worked out far more efficient for me for my time and also cheaper so the best approach to be honest with you is a hybrid approach but if you're familiar with all different forms of what i've just discussed then i think you'll have the best way of seeing as much as you can within a confined space of time or however long you have. And now the next part of this video is discussing a very big thing and it's the reason why you're all going to Europe is what to see. Now some of you might be watching this with actually knowing you want to go to Europe but you don't even know where to start. So I'm going to try and break this down as best for you so you can get a rough idea of where you can start uh, to look and know where you would like to go. Now, even though Europe isn't actually that much bigger than the continental US, the cultures between each country are vastly different. And that's worth doing a little bit of research into to make sure that you're gonna get the most out of your trip. And generally speaking, uh, Europe is broken up into about four of our different regions. And the first one will be Western Europe. Um, this will be uh, the UK, Ireland, France, Spain, Portugal, um, Holland, Belgium, um, Italy and them kind of places. Um, now, then you go into Eastern Europe, which would be countries like Poland, Hungary, uh, Romania, um, and then you can go up into Scandinavia, which would be your Finland, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Denmark, places like that. Have Southern Europe as well, uh, which would be a Greece, Montenegro, Croatia. But generally speaking, they're the kind of regions that you have. Now, if it was me, I would try and visit all parts of these regions, but just protect certain countries within so Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Southern Europe, for example. So I get a best experience of all different parts of Europe. Now, starting with Western Europe is most likely to be the part of Europe you're most familiar with. It's easy to get around. It has some amazing city and amazing sites, but 
is also the most expensive part of Europe. Now, Eastern Europe is becoming more and more popular with people from outside of Europe, and with good reason. And these are equally incredible places to see, and they're very, very cheap. So it's a great place for you to start, particularly if you're looking to save as much money as possible. Now, the other part of Europe you can look to go to um, is southern part of Europe. Now, here's where you're gonna get the incredible beaches of Greece and Turkey um, and Albania has become hugely popular um, in recent times as well. However, this is where you'll generally find it's more difficult to get around, particularly for relying on tr uh, public transport. Um, and also here's where you might find some poorer parts of Europe as well. And then you have the wonderful Scandinavia. Now, this is the most expensive um, place in Europe to visit um, but if you can extend your budget it can be also some of the most beautiful as well particularly if you're quite an outdoorsy person and want to see quite a lot of amazing nature I would implore you to go to places like Iceland and Norway hire a car and drive some of the incredible sites and these are just some of the things you can come see so if your budget can stretch to it this is a different definitely a good part of Europe that you should try and go and see. So that was just a general overview of the different parts of Europe. If some of you had no idea how the differences between them were. Um, so what you now need to do is decide on the kind of trip that you want to have. So if blue seas and incredible beaches and small towns is the thing that you want to do, then this is where I would strongly suggest you spend most of your time around the countries of Croatia, Albania, Montenegro, Greece, and Turkey. This is where you're gonna find uh, the incredible clear blue seas and amazing beaches and really pretty medieval towns as well. Hiking and being around some beautiful nature sites is your thing. Then the kind of places that I'd recommend that you go to would be Scandinavia and Europe and Iceland. I'd also recommend going around um, Slovakia, Slovenia as well. There's some incredible, beautiful uh, nature parks there. Um, um, and everyone misses this off, but the German Alps is one of the most beautiful places that I've ever been to. Um, same with Switzerland, same with Austria, and also a lot of people go to Italy for Florence and Rome and all that kind of thing, but a lot of people will miss off the Dolomites in Italy, which is the right northern part of Italy, which has some incredible sights as well. So if that's your kind of bag, these are the kind of places that I would highly recommend you look into. Um, but then if you want to travel as cheaply as possible, I would look to maybe focus your efforts around Eastern Europe. Um, these are still incredible places, and particularly the country of Hungary is absolutely stunning. Um, it's super cheap. I actually just come back from a trip in Vietnam where I was told everything was really cheap, and I actually found that Budapest the capital of Hungary was actually cheaper, which is absolutely insane. Um, it's still an incredible place. Don't think that because they're cheap, they're therefore worse off. Obviously, there are parts of Eastern Europe that aren't as affluent as other parts of Europe, but that still should not put you off visiting some of these amazing cities. Um, so generally, if you want to save as much money as possible, I would focus on sort of southern and Eastern Europe. Now, but if you just want to do um, sort of city hopping, I'm gonna put a list right here of what I think would be the top cities to go and see in Europe. And so make sure you look into them and see what you can do. I have got some guides of different parts of Europe as well, and I'm just linking that. Um, right now above me and also below. So make sure you check them out as well where I can give you more details on these very different cities. Um, but these are the ones that I will recommend you look at if just a city breaks and city hopping is a thing you want to do. And the next part of the video we're gonna talk about is money saving tips. Now I've already spoken about how to get around and how to make this as cheap as possible. Obviously you just need to decide yourself and um, whether you're going to be doing the train. If you are, then Interrain is going to be where you're going to save money. Um, however, I personally think a combination of car hire, train um, and flights is a great way of making the most of your time and also the most cost effective because some flights can be very, very cheap. And now if you're going to fly, um, again I have the video which I've already spoken about but I'm linking it again up here because it's a great way for you to save money. Um, also within Europe and um, there's a number of great apps you can download that are completely free and also are great money savers. I know I'm always going on about 
go into another video and I, I do have another one here but the reason is, is because it's quite detailed and I can't include it in every single video but that is the number of apps that I talk about within the video that will really really help you save as much money as possible um, particularly around travel money um, for, because in Europe contactless is a very very common way of paying for things um, and there's a number of different accounts you can get that are free to set up um, really simple like Monzo um, which is a great way for you to put your travel money on rather than having separate money cards so these little tips like that will help you save a quite a bit of money but a lot of these tips are of when you are already in Europe um, but there's one tip that I am going to give you which I think is really really crucial if you're flying into Europe now generally this is a rule that I follow no matter where in the world that I go to and that is to find wherever you're flying into um, from outside of Europe to make sure you have like a home city that you've flown into and also you buy the return from because it can be really really expensive for example if you fly into London and then you fly back to wherever you are uh, from Frankfurt or Zurich or somewhere like that for some reason the way in which the flights are calculated is always cheaper to buy a return from one city and um, so what you need to do is decide what main European terminal is the cheapest from where you're from whether that be Istanbul Frankfurt London Barcelona Madrid Madrid, places like that. Um, obviously, depending on what part of the world that you're from, these would be the generally the cheaper. If you're coming from the US, generally, I think London might be one of the cheapest ones you can fly into. But if you're coming from somewhere like South America, Madrid might be cheaper. So this is something you need to do on your own. But that is one of the tips that I will say about when you try to plan for your trip before you even get to Europe. That is a great money saving. Tip. Now, another great money saving tip if you're looking to book accommodation is to all look on a website called Hostel World. This is a website that you use anywhere in the world, um, but this is a great place for you to use for you to find really great and cheap deals. Um, there's a number of great hostels in Europe and this website has them all listed. Um, and so if you're planning on going to Europe and you're gonna be there for a while, don't always stay in hotels. Generally, these are always gonna be the most expensive way of doing it. If you wanna do it every now and then, of course it's fine, but I'd employ to always try and stay in a hostel because it's a great place for you to meet people no matter what age you are. And it's also one of the cheapest ways for you to have accommodation in Europe as well. Um, now, if you're worried, if you're sort of female so solo traveler, there will be hostels where they only have female only rooms. Um, so you don't worry about that. And also if you just, just want a bit of privacy, a lot of hostels will also offer you private rooms as well. So this is a great website for you to use. Now for some people um, coming from outside of Europe to Europe to do an incredible trip, um, there is quite a lot of difference between the expectations and there can be a little bit of a culture shock with some of the places that they go and visit. And so I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail about this to help you gauge your expectation really and so that you can get the most out of your trip. Now, the way for you to get the best out of this is wherever you are planning to go, just do a little bit of research in the country, the kind of the different cultures and the types of people that are there so you can sort of blend in and fit in a little bit better because there's nothing worse than a disrespectful tourist. I've seen from discussing with a lot of people who are living outside of Europe um, that to them there's not much difference between Spain and France and Italy in terms of the cultures but they couldn't be more wrong uh, within Spain we'll have, they'll be having that this kind of food will be completely different they'll be having a lot of tapas and they'll have siestas the opening times for some facilities like banks won't it will be all over the place um, the policing culture will be very different France driving styles will be very different the think things they eat will be different and in Italy again the driving style will be completely different what they eat and how when they eat things will be completely different and be a set culture so it's really really important that you're aware of these different things when you go there because I think a lot of people will have a misconception of what it can be and this is what this whole section is about is what to expect um, and if you go in with a, a different expectation of what you think a country is going to be like it can almost ruin it a little bit for you so just make sure you look into that so you know what to do and then guarantee you if you do do that you're going to find you have a vastly better time in these countries now what you will find when you go to a lot of some of these other places in europe is it may to you seem very very chaotic and um, particularly in some italy in some small medieval towns you'll find that there's a lot of crowds the roads and the way the cars act it's just very very overwhelming sometimes but what i would almost say is just embrace it go along with it because for some example there can be somewhere you're planning to go um, and the streets are tiny 
journey and there's a lot of people and you're hired a car and you don't know how you're going to do it and then you become overwhelmed and that's where it can have a negative effect just on your trip as well because you'll benefit from doing that little bit of extra research and it will help you plan a better trip so you know the kind of places that you want to see. And one of the biggest differences between European culture, particularly somewhere in the US, is walking. There's been a number of our TikToks where people have been shocked at the fact that there's not a lot of parking facilities in some of these old towns or there's they've got to walk up steep steps in this hilly and they've got and people and it's not because a lot of these really old beautiful looking towns are built for people not for cars first because they're just hundreds and sometimes thousands of years old and i've seen a number of people get shocked by that and, and so that's why it's really really important that if for example you're hiring a car you make sure that there's parking and where you can go for it. Don't assume it's always going to be like that. Um, that's one of the big misconceptions and mistakes that people generally make when they go to Europe. Now, lastly, what I want to talk about is what I believe to be some of my hidden gems of Europe, or to be honest, some of my recommendations. So some of you may or may not have heard of something called Paris Syndrome. Paris Syndrome is essentially when you've built up a place in your head, but the reality of a place is actually very, very different. Um, for example, Paris is a city that is hugely um, romanticize uh, particularly in American culture um, in terms of films and in Japanese culture as well and then when they go to Paris it's not what they thought and they they're shocked at actually the reality of it um, again this goes back to my earlier points of just making sure you do your research so you can embrace the culture and understand where you're going um, and I think people are becoming more aware of it but it's really important that no matter where you are in the world, that sometimes places can be overhyped. And so it's important you go somewhere based on the research that you have done, not what others have told you to do. Personally, if you're asking me, I think there are far better cities in Europe that you can visit in Paris. Obviously Paris has its great things, but it has a lot of its negativity, which I'm sure you can just go on TikTok right now and just have a look at it and you'll probably get some of the realities of it. But what I'm gonna do right now for you is give you some of my alternatives and and as I said, some of my hidden gems of Europe. So instead of going somewhere like Barcelona, which is an amazing city, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not, but instead of going there, why not go to somewhere like Seville or Getafe? These are cities in Spain that are truly stunning um, and they're not as busy uh, as you will find places in Barcelona. You'll find that the pickpocketing is significantly less and less of crime. Um, and also I feel personally you might have a completely different experience. Obviously some people want to go to some of these key cities, um, but Seville is honestly one of the best cities in Europe I've actually been to. And it's a great alternative for Barcelona if you're looking to one, save some money and also experience a different part of the Spanish culture. And um, again, I've done a little video of Seville just above me right now. Um, so you can get a bit more of an in-depth guide as to why you should go there. And um, some other cities that I also recommend, which I think are completely overlooked, and as a country, I think it's completely overlooked, is Portugal. Um, make sure you visit the cities of Lisbon and Porto. These are absolutely amazing cities, uh, particularly Porto. It's an incredible place where a lot of port wines come from. So if wine thing and wine countries your thing don't go to Bordeaux go to Porto you'll find there's some incredible things you can go and do there um, and the city itself isn't super expensive it's quite cheap in comparison to a lot of other cities in Western Europe particularly Madrid and Paris and London so this is a great place for you to go if you want to look at something slightly different now if you also think well I'm going to save money and I'm going to go to Eastern Europe well that's great but maybe instead of going to Prague have you considered going to the cities of Tallinn or Budapest? These are two amazing cities within quite close proximity to each other. And although Prague is amazing, it's actually now starting to become a little bit more expensive and quite heavily touristy. And um, so these are two other cities you can look at, which will give you uh, the same experience, but again, saving a little bit more in your wallet and still giving you the same experience. And, and another hidden gem that I thought I would talk about is Romania. A lot of people completely overlook Romania and honestly, hands down, it's one of the most beautiful countries you can see in Europe. And these are just some of the places that you can see if you go to Romania. It's quite difficult to get around via rail or anywhere like that. So hiring a car is probably your best option if this is looking like something you might want to see. From an outside of Europe perspective, I think it's a country that is vastly overlooked and is certainly something that is worth looking into if you're considering a trip to Europe.
Um, and also the Balkans is something that is really, really amazing. So a lot of people will go to Italy, but instead, if you want that feel of, a, of Italian places, I would strongly suggest you go to somewhere like Croatia. It has some incredible food, amazing beaches, and is half the price. And in a lot of cases, it's not as busy either. Um, and the Balkans countries like Montenegro, Bosnia, and Albania, again, will have some amazing places you can go and see. So these are all another great alternatives. And then if you're looking for something, again, a little bit different in a country you wouldn't ever consider is southern Germany. I've talked about it a little bit in this video already, but the Bavarian Alps are some of the most beautiful places in that I've ever seen, particularly around Kings Lake. There's some amazing little hidden gems you can find within here. Obviously, being in Germany, it's a little bit more money, but it is still a little bit cheaper than going somewhere like Scandinavia, which again I think is something that's so overlooked. The Norwegian fjords are absolutely stunning. Obviously, there's a lot more money for a lot of people, but it's somewhere that's overlooked. I think a lot of people like to come to Europe and they want to see Paris and Barcelona and London, places like that, and they always miss out these places that I've just mentioned. So if you are planning these trips, consider looking into some of the places that I've just mentioned right now. And I hope that maybe I've led you on a journey where you're gonna find some amazing places that are gonna be a little bit different, a little bit more alternative to what you thought you were going to see. So I'm sure some of the ones that I've mentioned might lead you to somewhere else you think, actually, I'm gonna go there instead. And that's one of the most important things I wanna talk about and push you to in this video is to make sure that you don't go to generic places and you look into some of the other incredible places that Europe has to offer. And so that kind of wraps up my video. I'm talking this video, I've kind of briefed over so many different aspects because it's a huge topic. Um, hopefully you'll be able to find some other videos which will give you a little bit more details of sort of how to find cheaper flights, cheaper apps, um, guides to certain cities as well. And again, I've linked them just below in the description. So please make sure that you watch that down there because Europe is an amazing place. However, some parts of Europe aren't for everyone. Don't go somewhere just based off a TikTok or an Instagram post. Make sure you do your own research to make sure you get the most out of your trip to this incredible continent. I thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please like it. It really helps me out. And again, if you've got any questions, you feel like I've list stuff out and I've not explained something clearly, just let me know down in the comments and I'll always make an effort to come back to you. I'll catch you on some other ones as well, hopefully.